And of course, I'd rather have that perfect night here. And that bottle of iced coffee. And some milk chocolate. That's really good. Okay, time to get ready with this. So yeah, he says it's going to be in the section with alchemy. Though I should probably find the alchemy section. I can't really remember where at. Where that is. And I think it should be... Oh, here it is. Chapter 2, alchemy. Somewhere around here. Oh yeah, so it's like the page before it. It's funny, he mentions the alchemy section, but... The very first section of this book, the alchemy section, is on the page before everything else. <laughs> so, yeah, cauldrons and uh, genies right here. I think I kind of want to read this. Alchemy is one of the main pillars of wizardry. To the uninitiated, it appears to involve nothing more than the mixing of ingredients in a pot. To the aspiring wizard, however, it is an art unrivaled in its depth and complexity. With the necessary knowledge and materials, a wizard can create items blessed with near boundless magical power. Alchemy can provide you with more than just simple provisions. It can be used to conjure up great swords, shields, and even objects unknown to this world. There are, after all, an infinite number of possible formula. Nor Note also that true masters take great pride in devising their own formula, something any aspiring young wizard should do well to attempt. No alchemy ta can take place without a cauldron. Cauldrons can only be opened by wizards, and may only be used for alchemical purposes. Be sure to treat your cauldron with the respect it deserves. Every cauldron has its own resident genie, and it is the genie who decides whether or not a wizard is worthy of owning th that cauldron. Should you happen upon a curious pot, be sure to take a look inside. It may well be a cauldron left over from the Age of Sages. If you have difficulty removing the lid, try saying the magic words, Open says a me. Just also remember that there's those little dashes between the says of uh, me. Keep that in mind. And now we're going to try this out. And it did mention that the uh, genie in the freaking cauldron likes to see if the wizard is worthy enough. And I slept at the end for a reason, wink, wink. So, of course, we have to type in the magic words exactly as they were. Open says of me. Not your right to command me will be judged in battle. Huh? Where? Where is it? Ah! Aha! Now to arms! I would have preferred a cooking battle, honestly. Would have felt like a shokugeki. Anyway, we're fighting Alchemy. Maybe I should have given RNGI one to Esther, but uh, I think at this point I kind of want her to fight on her own. I'm tempted to change up the strategy because it seems if I have her on keep us healthy, she's going to just resort to using magic herself and not on the freaking familiars. I don't even know what provide backup means exactly. Give it your all? Well, I don't know about that. Don't. Okay, just do what you like. I don't even care what you do anymore, Esther. Just be careful with this guy. Hey, hey, turn away from her. Alakazam. Put it on. <laughs> no, don't do it. Put that away, please. So when he busts out that fire sword, he has increased attack, I believe. And uh, he will just go all out against you. As long as he has that fire sword. So, just be really on the defensive while he has that thing out. And I'm honestly surprised he is not busting out like crazy combos right now. And, yeah, Al Combo. Defend against that. Thank you. Now, let me get that. Let me get that. Yeah! Fear the dance of my people. 
More often than not, you will get a Golden Glim if you defend against his uh, Al Combo. And I'm just going to take this chance to do that. And thankfully that uh, Golden Glim actually got my uh, stamina back on Mito. Because I'm really going to have to rely on Mito here. Oh, jeez, why'd you switch to Lamal? Why? Why, though? Sandblast isn't going to freaking work. I'm not even going to bother using any of that stuff. And I should probably heal Esther, actually. Okay, Esther. Don't be a jackass. In South Central while drinking the juice in the hood. At least you're sticking with that. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. How you like me now? Let's see how you deal with fire magic. Oh, really? You could actually cancel that? I did not even realize he could do that. Jeez. Well, at least I got my health back for the most part. Stand there and look pretty. <laughs> Is he really going to try to poke you with that parasol? Now's your chance to give him what for, Ollie boy. So yeah, if he busts out the parasol, I think he alternates between the sword and the parasol, so... Afterwards, so yeah, just pummel him while he's like this. He could still hurt you, mind you. But it's just not as effective as it was before. And yes, Primal Roar, thank you, Esther. Thank you. Doing pretty good for yourself. Now, Mito, just... So yeah, just take the chance while he has the parasol to just pummel the crap out of him. He can barely do any damage to you with it. I mean, he'll damage you, just not as much as if he had the flaming freaking sword. Oh yeah, how you like that? Okay, I'm gonna have to switch to RNG I won real quick. How about stalagmites? Eh, it wasn't that great. Oh, now he's back to regular weapons. And of course, he's going to try his luck at this again, and he's going to succeed. Or not? Oh, hey! Thank you, game! I'm going to punch him. You know, if he just stops freaking circling around him, why do you back away from him? There's no point in doing so. Okay, uh, Barmy Ba is definitely not going to be useful in this fight, but hey, he's going to get a lot of experience out of the whole thing. Yeah. How about that Golden Glim now, please? Hubble Bubble. Right, I forgot about this. When he goes into this, he's going to bust out a really strong attack. So either beat him beforehand, or defend as soon as he busts it out. And I think I'm just going to defend. Thank you. Hee hee! Oh, crap. Yeah, Esther's not going to survive that. <laughs> I am honestly surprised, Esther. You're surprising me right now, but you're actually surviving. Barely. Oh, jeez. You're not going to survive this next hit. Look, it's the principle of the thing. I want you to survive at least one boss fight. Look, focus on me. Focus on me. Esther, heal yourself. You're out of MP, aren't you? No, you have MP! Why aren't you using it? Oh, you probably have a bunch of NP because of all those freaking glims. Oh, either way, Alchemy is pretty much done. You know, if he stops moving away so freaking quick. There we go. I proved myself, and Esther actually survived a boss fight. Holy crap. Esther, you're going places. Not really, though. Your AI's still gonna suck. Oh, yeah. Oh, and now RNGI1 can metamorph. Level 11 Barmaba. Level 20 Esther. Level 15 Planter. Level 16 Lamal. Level 15 Dazzle. <laughs> Why would he just attack us like that? Are you alright, Oliver? Oh, your name is Oliver, Master. I'm sorry? Oh, most illustrious Master Oliver. Your prowess in battle is unsurpassed. Graceful, fearsome, yet merciful. 
Truly you are a master worthy of alchemy, genie of the pot. Genie? That's right, Dolly Boy. Every cauldron has a genie inside it, see? They do what's known as alchemy for you, but they have to test you first to see if you're worthy, ain't it? That's why the big red bruiser started on you. Nothing personal like, if you're after a cauldron, it's the only way. It's traditional, see? Gee, you could have warned me, Mr. Drippy. Hmm, <clears throat> when I first laid eyes on you, Master, your diminutive size worried me most prodigiously. But you have humbled me. You have reminded me that a book may never be judged by its cover, no matter how unimpressive it may be. I bow to you, Master, now and forevermore. Pleased to meet you, too. And now we have the cauldron. Master, I must pay you tribute. Please accept these humble gifts. So we get a bottle of pixie dew, a bunch of sour grapes, and three slumber knot leaves. We must combine these items with the power of alchemy. They will produce a most, a most wondrous and magical result. It seems you are still in need of instruction concerning the use of the cauldron. There are two ways to alchemize. When you possess the alchemical formula of the item you desire, simply select follow the formula and you shall have it in an instant. But should you not possess the formula, you may select mix, mix and match to combine ingredients to your heart's content. I pray you will produce most wondrous and magical results, Master. For your first steps on the path of the alchemist, I recommend you to follow a formula. Do not run before you can walk, Master. And for this, your first alchemical experiment, I present you with also with a formula. Behold! Would have been nice if we could see it right here, but now just take its word for it. <laughs> So we can only follow the formula for now, and he wants us to make this Sprite Dew, which restores 200 HP to everyone in the party. And of course, it needs a bottle of Pixie Dew, a bunch of sour grapes, and three Slumber Knot leaves. Let's do it. And now we have a bottle of Sprite Dew. I think when you can have the formula, you can make multiple ones at once, but if you're just doing mix and match, you can only do one at a time. Your cauldron is capable of many more such miracles. It can also it can produce weapons, armor, medicines, and treasures of every kind. You must take your wizard's companion in hand and try all that the alchemical arts have to offer. I will, Mr. Genie, sir. Thank you very much. I look forward most humbly to serving you, master. Ha ha ha! There is useful lay, Ollie boy. Now we just need to bag ourselves a boat and all will be tidy. Let's go, Mr. Drippy. I don't think everyone leveled up. Yeah, Oliver's still going to have to rest up right now. But hey, now we have the cauldron. And we can mix and match if we wanted to. Though I think we don't really have much we can do in the way of all this. Also, if you check a certain item, if it has ingredient on the bottom right of it, of its description, then that means it could be used in alchemy. So you choose one chocolate. And let's see if I have something right here. Well, creamy milk. I think if we combine it with creamy milk, we're going to be getting something very good. So let's mix it up. Ah, I, I thought I was being smart with that. Never mind. But uh, whenever you get a combination that doesn't work, you don't have to worry about using up those items. They will stay in your inventory. Despite how alchemy came out of that freaking pot. All right, now that we have alchemy, I think there's a couple new uh, quests we can do, or errands. This one in particular, I remember. That's a cauldron, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's right. So you must be a wizard. Crikey, it sounds like this little girl knows a thing or two about wizarding, Ollie boy. I do. I read my wizard book every day. I know all about wizards and the spells they cast. But the spells, they're not my favorite thing about wizards. It's alchemy that I love the most. I read, that, I read that wizards can make almost anything by mixing materials in a cauldron. Is that true? Sure is. It's actually pretty easy if you have the right ingredients. Easy for one such as you, I think. Ah, being a wizard must be very wonderful. Would you... Would you show me how alchemy works? Could, you can make me a candle cutter, perhaps. I heard that candle cutters can only be made using alchemical methods. Dearly love to see one for myself. And, of course, three stamps for that. I'll gladly do that for you. I don't think I've ever been this excited. Now to make a candle cutter, you'll need a flint dagger and also an ember stone. Flipping heck, you don't you don't have to know your stuff. It's all in my book. All right, I shall wait for you here. Please hurry, I'm very excited. I think an ember stone we're not going to be able to get quite yet. But uh, soon, 
soon. And we get a slice of sweetie pie right there. 30 guilders. And I believe, yep, the swift solutions is right here. So I think we can have more of an idea of, like, all this. Oh, great. New bounty hunts. And I think these are ones in, yeah, we're going to have to sail out to do those. We hunted that one at the very least. Four fish burgers and 400 guilders I'll gladly take. I think the fish burgers uh, recover as much health as those uh, Tika Mahalas I bought. And the Aaron board right here. Yeah, we already accepted these. I think there should be an NPC around here that gives us alchemical formulas. Either that or I'm thinking of Alma Moon. I can't really remember off the top of my head. I remember it being a lady or something. And I don't think it was you. Yeah, it's just the uh, rainbow leaves that we gotta do that. And I don't think we could talk to whoever's up there. Unfortunately. And then we already talked to you about getting your kindness. So you're not the person. Blessings of the Ancients, thou shalt return with a basket full of glow shrimp. Well, Alright. It's glow shrimp season, you know. At this time, they're at the most plump and plentiful. Well, enough about glow shrimp, I guess. Everybody here is wearing a swimsuit, huh? Yes, no wonder they call it the seaside paradise of the south. Look, they're not dressed correctly. That's so very disrespectful. Huh? Knickers, it's like Ding Dong Dell all over a flippin' gin. Jeepers. Come now, what is this disturbance? Ah, Governor, the very person we need. What do we have here, hmm? You're visitors to our town, I take it. You must know that all who enter this place are required by law to wear the appropriate attire. I speak, of course, of the bathing suit. Uh... But we ain't planning on moving here, is it? We're just passing through like. Nonetheless, the law must be obeyed. Obeyed. The dark days of the past cannot be revisited. We once had a great one. That ah. we once had great trouble here. I'm just talking all weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. You'd never think it to look at the place now. To look at the place now, it's so peaceful. It was a time of great sadness. Travelers from all over our world, our world, sailed to Castaway Cove. Travelers who do not always see eye to eye. The men of the sea are hardy but quick-tempered. Without constant supervision, they would soon fall upon one another in anger. And for this reason, I devised a means of maintaining the peace. I'm sure you've guessed already what it was. Um. Yes, to require all those in the town to wear bathing suits, of course. Uh. What is he, flipping crackers or something? What difference would that make? A great difference indeed, Very. For in a bathing suit, one cannot conceal a weapon. <laughs> no matter where their homeland may be, all who come here must dress in the same manner. Be they from Al Mamun, from Ding Dong Dell, or from the furthest flung islands of the north. When they don the bathing suit, they become citizens of Castaway Cove. Wow, that's interesting. But such a strange idea. How did you convince everyone to agree? <laughs> At first, of course, I was met I met with ridicule from all sides. None would support my scheme. But I did not waver. I remained true to my vision. I put away my resentment and my frustration. And why I was able to show such, such restraint? Because I had a dream. A dream of peace in the place of my birth. Gee, I thought they were dressed like that because it was so hot. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> You're not the first to think so. This only proves how peaceful our town has become. Such a misunderstanding is a happy one. I understand now. We should respect the governor's wishes and dress like everybody else. Let's do it. I want to become a citizen of Castaway Cove. Alright then, if we flippin' must. But I ain't got a swip suit, have you? <laughs> Worry not, little one. We have a great wealth of bathing suits prepared for visitors such, just such as yourselves. Come, you will follow me to my home. That is totally not weird at all check me out dolly boy i look the business in this little number huh oh that's marvelous <laughs> what do you think hmm? 
Sorry I'm late. We may be boys, but we ain't entirely ignored the more involved nature of the feminine dress. Yeah, hey, Ollie boy. Uh, I guess. Anyway, we're all citizens of Castaway Cove now. Let's go take a look around. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor, sir. <laughs> the bathing suits are yours now. You must wear them whenever you visit us. Now at last I can say to you, Welcome to Castaway Cove. Thank you. And now at last we can go and look for a flippin' boat. Talk about a la a faf mun. Hooray! Honestly though, this does give some uniqueness to Castaway Cove, so we're not just passing through. Gives some lore to the world and such. But seriously though, I, I don't know what they were trying to do with Esther there. It seems a little a little excessive, not that much, but it's it's a little weird for anyone my age. Ugh. Anyway. Excuse me, sir. Are you the captain of this ship? That I am, lad. Captain and master of all who sail in her. You have a beautiful boat, captain. You do not need to tell me that. She's the most beautiful on the seven seas. There's not a finer or more fearsome ship afloat. And her name is no less fine or fearsome, for she is the legendary sea cow. I have something to ask you, Captain. Would you let us ride aboard your ship? You seek passage aboard aboard the Sea Cow? We need to get to Autum Autumnia. I'm going to just pronounce it as that. I don't even care if that's not the way to pronounce it. I don't even care. You believe you can merely stroll aboard? Who do you think you are? Well, Captain, I'm... Well, Captain, if I may, I say what a fine captain you are. The young man standing before you, and I know it seems unlikely, but bear with me. This unassuming scrap of a lad here, Oliver his name is. He is only on a journey to save our flippin' world. He is only accompanied by none other than myself, Drippy, Lord High Lord of the Fairies. Oh, and I'm Esther. You are a fairy? I've traveled the world, but never have I seen one of your kind before. So, lad, you travel to save the world with a fairy for a companion. Totally original. Then surely my ship alone will not suffice. You'll need two ships. A fleet, even. Ha ha ha. Uh, does that mean we could ride with you? But of course, boy, just as soon as you've shown me a letter of passage from our beloved Khalifa, the most exalted Lola. We sail, after all, for her glory and for that of Al Mamun. Should the Khalifa see fit to grant you permission to come aboard, I will refuse you nothing. All right, Captain, we'll go get that ladder right now. Ha 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 ha, fine words, lad, but easier said than done, I fear. Still, if you're truly to save our world, it should be the work of mere moments. Ha 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 ha. I don't think he believes us, does he? Doesn't matter, we just have to prove him wrong. If we can bring him that letter of passage, he'll have to believe us. Let's go back to Alma Moon and get it. Khalifa Lola, eh? I wonder what she's like. Looking forward to this, I am. I flippin' love royalty, me. Of course, it wasn't gonna be that freaking easy. Gonna have to jump through a few more hoops in order to get this bad boy running, you know? But I think for now I'm going to call it because I've been recording for an hour and a half and I feel really freaking tired. I'm recording this just as I got off of work, so probably not the best idea, but at least I got something now. And it's not freaking Zelda. As much as I want to play that some more, actually I'm probably going to play that more right now. <laughs> so next time on Let's Play Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch, actually I'm going to save outside because I'm not going to spend 50 guilders for a recovery I don't need. Next time on Let's Play Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch, we're going to freaking talk to the Khalifa. And I don't think you're the person we're supposed to talk to, is it? Nope. Okay. They're not the NPC I was thinking of. Maybe it is an Alma Moon, but uh, see you guys then.